My name is Mads Tolling, and I live here in San Francisco, California. I'm originally from Copenhagen, Denmark, and what I'm playing here today is a Yamaha SV250, also known as an electric violin. There is no hollow wooden box to make the sound. The way I get the sound is through this cable here that goes down out to an amplifier, and uh, so without the amplifier, it would sound something like this. <laughs> Sound kind of silent, which is also why uh, this particular series is called the Silent Violin Series. So what I played for you there is a fiddle tune called Catharsis that was actually written by a person in Vermont. Sounds a little bit like Irish fiddle music, if you ask me, but it is actually American. And the reason why I'm playing this piece is today I'd like to talk about how to create good rhythm and good time when you play um, styles like fiddle music. Um, and jazz. Uh, because in classical music, which uh, the violin is most known for playing, obviously you've got to have good rhythm, but it's not really, the rhythm is not based on groove. The rhythm is based on maybe following exactly the note durations that are on the page. Um, and in this kind of music, in fiddle music, it's all about creating a groove that people want to dance to, move to, feel in their bodies as they play. So, um, I'd like to first of all go over a technique called one tater, two tater, also, also known as shuffle bow. And a shuffle bow pattern is just like it sounds like you're kind of shuffling back and forth. The key thing is you want to keep the bow moving. You don't want to ever stop the bow. So let me just show you what I mean by that. So we're going to play on the A and the D string. basic technique. Now, um, classical music you might do going back to Suzuki there. So you don't want to keep that little space between the notes because it creates a disconnect rhythmically. Whereas this uh, really kind of grooves I think. And the other part of the reason why it grooves is I'm actually tapping my foot. And so it's a lot of back and forth between the arm and the foot. I'm tapping on one, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And the accent on the bow comes in a two and four in this case. To illustrate that, I could play a tune called the Arkansas Traveler that has that one tater, two tater feel. So technically what I do is I put an accent on that two and four using my wrist and my hand here. the bow faster there and I also pull it a little bit down to the string to create an accent but once again I don't want to ever stop the bow going back and forth just make that smooth thing uh, so it's great to use the wrist for this and really not too much bow either just enough bow to make that sound happen um, so that's the one tater two tater um, and the key thing to practice this, I think, is using a metronome because that really gets you grounded with uh, the way you're tapping. So in this case, I put my metronome on 60 beats per minute. And then you want to log in with the metronome with your foot before you even think about playing. And now you go back and just play the one tater, two tater. metronome does it's it just kind of helps you out in the beginning because it's really about you feeling the rhythm ultimately it's it's about you having that internal beat and internal feeling of the groove and then the metronome helps you in the beginning just to get solid and then you kick off uh, them training wheels it turn the metronome off and now you got it yourself you just don't want to 
uh, rush when you do this. So the foot is really the foundation, and the bow kind of plays off that. So now I want to just mention, uh, go back to catharsis because um, similar kind of feel, but a little bit different uh, with the bowing. So the way this one works is starts on two separate notes, and then you play. So you're basically on the downbeat foot and bow together. So you notice that I play separate and then three in a row, slur together. So for that, two and four. Two. want to use a little bit more bow to get um, to make up for the three notes that you're going to play afterwards. So a great way to practice this piece would be just to do that sort of motor. Get that motor going till it feels good and then you can play the whole piece like this. You also notice that I use some of the open strings. I make basically the piece in G minor, so I'll use that open G and the D here. Now we go to the bridge, or rather the B section, which actually uses uh, what's called threes over this 4-4 four, four melody or over this 4-4 four, four, uh, time field. It sounds like this. So here it's all about being rock steady with that foot as you're playing. And here you'll notice the backbeat in the bow goes away. Now you're instead playing the threes. natural accent will be those high notes there. So um, to keep that in mind, um, let's try just to play the last uh, bridge and end it here. All right, I hope you uh, learned a little bit about rhythm and how to uh, use this in a uh, folk music, bluegrass, and Irish fiddle music. Again, remember to really get solid on the one and the three, and then you use that bow to create the accents that uh, will make people want to move and groove to the music. Uh, thank you.